Okay, and welcome to the SubConnect Live Show. I am Andre Niemeyer, your co-host. Candice is not here. She is uh, busy. Battle of the Paddle Week. But uh, we've had an incredible morning, incredible lineup of guests. And uh, we're going to have another awesome show right now with the Canadian racers. So uh, we have Jessica and Dale Rando all the way from Canada. Jessica is one of, if not the fastest uh, woman in Canada right now. So one of not the fastest. Uh, she has been doing great uh, in all of the races and uh, they are just a wonderful couple. So Jessica and Del, welcome. Thanks Thank for you. coming down Thank and uh, for the interview. Stoked to have you guys here. I'm actually very, I want to visit Canada. Canadians don't get me wrong, <laughs> but uh, I am stoked that we're here in this warm sunshine, Southern California. So welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. So we met uh, in Utah. Right, uh, right, right around the, the, the show and uh, the, the trade show, Outdoor Retailer, and I was racing. And uh, this is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> just say it, Andre, it's okay. Just say it, just get it out, <laughs> just get it out. So, okay, I was doing the men's race. I was doing the elite. I don't know why I was doing the elite. Uh, what were we doing the elite? We're, yeah. we're doing yep. the elite. Yep. Okay, so they had close. Okay, I had missed the start for the open race. So lo and behold, I ended up in the elite race. And uh, so the guys were on 14 uh, boards and we had a head start. So women had about like two minutes, I think, a minute or two minutes. About a minute. A minute, a minute. Oh, I feel better now. <laughs> so <laughs> the women were about one minute behind. They had a one minute leg start. And they were on 12 sixes. That's where it gets really embarrassing right now. <laughs> so about like uh, there were three laps on the Jordan L Reservoir. And about the third, or toward the end of the third lap, and then there was a f f fourth lap, I see, G uh, so Candace and Brandy passed me, then Jillian and Jessica. And I was like, <sighs> and you looked so solid. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know you've been racing and winning a lot up there in Canada. Obviously, you know, people can just look and see you're a very strong paddler. You are fast. And, uh, but during that race in particular, one of the things that uh, I noticed was that a lot of the people were having trouble with the altitude and just affecting the fitness, the, the form was completely out of whack. You could see people were just breaking down. And here comes Jessica, like with impeccable form, she's still incredibly solid, very high cadence. And uh, I'm like, how is she doing? And you looked like you could go for another five laps, and <laughs> you were bridging the gap. So you did have Brandy and Candace going neck and neck, uh, Jillian. But the, uh, the, that final, you know, lap and a half, the way you're just bridging that gap was phenomenal. So afterwards, then I find out you were one of the fastest gals in Canada, and uh, definitely the fastest in your neck of the woods. And uh, I am stoked to have Canada as a big part of our audience. And uh, then we got to hang out. You two are just wonderful <laughs> to spend time with. We had a blast. Went to parties together. Right, so yeah. welcome. Tell us about your background. That's, uh, with that introduction, having said that, so tell, tell us about your background. Where did you come from? How did you get into stand-up? Well, my background, I'd say, is probably a little bit different than most people's backgrounds in stand-up paddleboarding. I come from a sprint canoe background, where it's also known as high-nail canoe, so Quick Boy's own Jimmy Terrell is also of that background. So yeah. um, in getting into stand-up, I, I competed in, in, in sprint canoe for about, uh, it was about 12 years or so, um, and that's where much of my training comes from. I shifted into stand-up paddleboarding soon after I stopped competing in, in sprint canoe just for a change and the beauty of stand-up paddleboarding is that every waterway is kind of your domain as opposed to just flat rivers um, and a race course. Race courses can vary so much. They can be, you know, what we're going to have at Battle of the Paddle, they can be a river, they can be anything. So I liked the, the variety that had a lot of appeal to me so I picked up stand-up paddleboarding um, and the biggest challenge for me in switching into stand-up paddleboarding was that uh, I'm a one-sided paddler. So I come from a right. uh, paddling background where you only train to paddle proficiently on one side. And that's C1, correct? C1, you've got yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Jim Terrell, and a lot of people might know Jim Terrell, also mm -hmm. was, he was an Olympic uh, C1 paddle, paddler. I think maybe he went to the Olympics a few mm -hmm. times. And I think, correct me if you're wrong, your coach or somebody you paddled with uh, was, uh, 
Larry, Larry Kane. Kane. Larry Kane. Mm -hmm. That's right. Who it's is an Olympic gold medalist. Absolutely. Right? In C1. In C1. So, so, and that's the Toronto, Toronto area, right? The Toronto area. Yeah. Right. So, well, but you bring a lot of technique. It might be one-sided, but uh, there is is very technical, mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot of that has translated into stand-up. Absolutely, battle. so much of the the sprint canoe technique translates into stand-up, and having trained yourself in that technique for you know 10 to 12 years on the one side allows you the ability to train yourself in that technique on the other side. It just takes that side of your body a little bit a uh, little bit of time to get used to the movement. And that's one of the things I think is so amazing about stand-up paddle boarding is how people are coming from so many different backgrounds, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, I'm not going to even cite the whole week. Just like the, today alone, we had uh, Chuck Patterson from like a ski slash surf slash kite boarding background. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had uh, Cody Kerbox mm -hmm. all around. We have Talia coming up here like all around water. Then uh, earlier we had, uh, yesterday we had uh, gold Olympic, Olympic gold medalist Christina Zor mm -hmm. from K, K1. I think she was in K4. That's where she got uh, her Olympic medal. Uh, with Rami, three-time Olympian. And uh, then we had Danny Ching and Jamie Mitchell uh, yesterday as well. And Danny Ching coming from the outrigger, mm -hmm. Jamie from the prone paddleboard. So that's one of the most amazing things mm -hmm. about this sport. So when did you make that transition? I made that transition about two years ago now, maybe a little less than two years actually, but about two years ago, um, that was the first time that I hopped on a stand-up paddleboard and I just fell in love with it and I've been doing it ever since. And that's another thing too, because you can do it more in different conditions, right? Mm -hmm. C1, it's very flat. flat. And Dell, you also, so by the way, Jessica and Dell, a couple, we should <laughs> introduce both of them, <laughs> One of the, and uh, Dell, we we did the race together. Yes, we did. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we got uh, humbled by both of us, <laughs> yes, by did, your yeah. wife. And uh, <laughs> but you also come from like a canoe background, right? I do. Yeah, I started off in uh, marathon canoe, and then also tried my hand at uh, sprint canoe, C one, and kayak. But got into outrigger, which was a lot of fun. Did that for quite a few years, and uh, and then transitioned same time as Jessica into sup. And uh, I haven't turned back like, as soon as I got into stand up paddle boarding, kind of ditched all my other paddle craft, and that's all I paddle now. That's right. Yeah. So, give us some of the highlights of a stand up paddle career. I mean, and I want to, you know, kudos to all, all the people there in Canada. They're a big chunk of our audience. We're stoked to have them mm -hmm. watching us and have you on the set. So, give us an insight of the Can Canadian scene and, well, your, the, and the highlights there that you've had in that. Okay, so the Canadian scene is, it's amazing to watch it grow. It's grown so much even just between last year and this year alone. There's whole um, ra different race series that are cropping up, um, so you could pretty much do a race every weekend if you wanted to, which is amazing. So um, it's also amazing to see the, the field grow and, you know, the pack's tighter and people are doing two hour long races and, and you know, fighting for the finish, fighting for the win, so that's kind of nice too. Um, there's a couple main main races we start as early as as April and that's uh that's a pretty cold water race in Canada for sure <laughs> we're hoping that we don't need to be chipping through ice at that point um does it happen during a race where you actually run into ice oh no <laughs> no. no it just feels like it when you fall in <laughs> yeah. yeah that um, would be something oh wait well he got stuck on an ice patch yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh Todd is here oh my goodness yeah. what is that? <laughs> But I would say the highlight uh, for me was definitely my winning experience last year at both Worlds and Battle of Paddle. And as Chuck mentioned, that's kind of the, the silent worlds. Um, it was just amazing to be on the race course with all the top athletes. And it was such a learning experience for me, just in terms of exposing me to conditions that I don't have access to back at home. So uh, that for me, doing that race, participating in it. Um, and which one was that? That was Battle last year. Battle so that last was year. My last first year. Battle of Paddle. So this year I... I uh, you know, I have a, somewhat of an idea of what I'm getting myself into. Last year was definitely a learning experience, um, but one I wouldn't trade for anything else just because it, it helped me advance significantly as an athlete in the sport. So, yeah. And what do you guys do up there? I know you guys do some training and you have some instruction, right? So For work, you mean? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I am um, a personal trainer of living. I, uh, I actually have my own company, so I personal train and I coach in paddle sports, predominantly stand-up paddleboard, but that also extends into dragon boat coaching and outrigger coaching. So there you go. How can people find out about it? 
newmefitness.com. There you go. <laughs> and umefitness.com. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> Just learn. So there you go. There you That's go. why it's good to have the Canadians here and getting all that insight. Tell us about uh, some of the main events there in Canada. Like the main events two. right now, um, I would say would be number one would be the Eastern Canadian Sub Championships, which definitely bring, draws a large crowd. We actually had um, some some California participants this year, so Joe Joe Bark came down, Jimmy Terrell. Jimmy Terrell yeah. um, so it's not great to have them have them down. That's a big downwinder race, so it's about 15 kilometers. Sorry, we were kilometers, <laughs> 10 miles, <laughs> uh, about 10 miles downwind. Um, so we cross our fingers for good conditions that day. The next one would be the Canada Cup Sub Race, which was sponsored by 404. Danny mm -hmm. Chang came out to help run that one. And that was very much a battle of paddle style race, which is that I definitely my my heart and soul go into the ones that, that are battle the paddle style. Right. They're just so much fun. Um, so that would be that one's a little later in the season, and uh, that one also drew a very large crowd. So wow. yeah, those are our main yeah. the two the two big. And we have a sub series too, summer sub series, mm -hmm. which uh, takes yeah. place uh, basically throughout the entire summer. They have races in different locations uh, throughout the summer, and they have some really cool cool events and yeah. you can actually get surf on some of those as well. Yeah, they also have done a really good job at running battle yeah. paddle style. So um, that one is actually, they run races all throughout southeastern Ontario. So all of them are within you know, three hours driving distance of us and they yeah. have them, what is it, every second weekend or yeah, so. Every second weekend. Um, and they run a whole series. So it's, uh, and so that's it keeps you training, it keeps you fresh. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. definitely. It exposes you to different conditions. So we have access where we are. We can, we're within driving distance of a couple of the Great Lakes. So each of the Great Lakes offers something a little different. Well, uh, if uh, winter gets too cold and uh, nippy up there, just welcome. You're welcome to come to Southern California. <laughs> Thank you. We do have a winter series with no ice patches. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to go to a quick commercial break right now. And when we come back, we got, uh, we're going to be talking about gear, equipment, uh, what they've been riding, and uh, we're going to have some insight there. So as you can tell, they're highly technical, come from like a competitive canoe sprinting background. You definitely want, want to stay tuned for that. So right back after the break. This is a new fin I designed with uh, FCS and basically this is kind of that all around stand up paddle racing fin. Looking at a bunch of the, the racing crafts out there between rowing and Olympic kayaks and stuff like that, they all tend to have the same shape fin. And so what we did is we started with that racing model and then we tweaked it a little bit, rounded it out and uh, took a little chunk out here which actually helps it surf a little bit. And if you need to, you can take a 14 foot race board throw a bottom turn on it. It's got just enough sweep in it so it doesn't catch kelp. Put a slightly longer base and then what I like to do is I take the fin and I set it all the way back and what it allows is it gives you a few more strokes on each side before it tends to track a little bit straighter but it still has a little bit of play so if you do need to turn you can turn the board you're not stuck in one direction. The fin is really really fast for that everyday fin if you want one fin this is the one you want. Okay, and we are back on the Subconnect Live show with uh, Jessica Rando and Del Da Silva. Got that right, right? You got it right. All righty. Yeah. <laughs> so all the way from Toronto, Canada, uh, great racers, and we're very thrilled to have you here. By the way, as a side note, Tyler has been like just getting us really nervous about like the whole competitiveness <laughs> and turnout for the BOP. Uh, Talia coming up next. <laughs> so um, let's talk about gear. Uh, we, you're obviously going really fast uh, to pass me with like a one minute lag time on a smaller <laughs> board. And I am slow, but I'm not that slow. Um, so tell us about what you've been riding, what you like, and uh, what features you've really seen to make a difference uh, in, in your paddling. I know you've tested different boards, so you have like some very mm -hmm. objective experiences like timing and uh, coming from a, a competitive sp canoe, sprint canoe mm -hmm. background, like every single second and a fraction of a second counts. And mm -hmm. I think you did some timing on that. And uh, mm -hmm. so. Well, what I ride right now is the uh, the the M&M, the M&M Battle of the Paddle, 12.6. Um, 
love that board very very it's a good volume for me so it's not too too high volume and for it's those nice. for those who don't know that's the melvin and morelli by boardworks by yes Redworks. by boardworks so. um so they've been great at, at sponsoring me this season and and uh you know allowing me to ride on their boards and um and i'm i'm loving it i yeah, I find it great, especially in downwind conditions. It catches waves like like that effortlessly, and um, I think the nose of the board is one of the greatest features of that of that board. And that it just it, you know it, it slices through water really, really nicely. So um, my paddle uh, currently I use a ZRE, a ZRE blade. Um, the size of the blade is an, an eight, uh, an eight. So it works out to be if you're talking the surface area, it works out to be I mean, just a little under a ninety, so eighty-five to ninety. Okay. Um, I also have that magic spot similar to to, uh, to Heather Boss in terms of where I like my paddle to come up to. I think a uh, paddle that's too long is no good. It'll definitely uh, damage your your shoulder. So I'm kind of in and around that that little special spot. So too. let's let's do a close up, Martha. Yeah. Martha, our lovely Martha. Let's get a close up. Yeah. Right, right, right around. Right, right, there, right, right there. around there's the money. <laughs> okay, let's go camera A. There you go. Just show it to oh, the camera. Right around there. there. Okay. That's the, That's for the me. magic spot magic right there. Spot for me. So just uh, raise your arm and then is right there in that area. Mm -hmm. yep. So and just play with it, right? Absolutely. Different sprint races, usually shorter. You're going to be down here. Mm -hmm. And that's the tip of the, the handle, the grip. So, uh, And then you can just play around. Longer distance, you go up, mm -hmm. you're more up straight. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and you do a lot of flat water too, so the M&M &M must just be great, like low profile nose. Mm -hmm. And how do you find it for the Battle, ba battle of the Paddle different conditions? And you mentioned like a Battle of the Paddle model. So wh mm -hmm. what is that? Well, one of the uh, one of the things I like the most actually about that board is um, it's very easy to pivot turn on it. Uh, so you don't need to take any dramatic steps to get to the very back of your board to make that to make that thing do a, an efficient pivot turn. Um, so it's very agile as a board. Um, it also it also rides waves. It's amazing at riding waves. So um, this will be my first time at at battle on the M and M. So I'm excited to excited to see how it goes. That's yeah. right, and you also paddled uh, an M and M, right? I am, yeah, yeah. And you guys do some downwind, and how do you see it working in that? Because that somewhat mirrors uh, the, the the ocean conditions with some chop, and mm -hmm. and uh, how do you see the board working there? I think it's great. I think it, uh, it handles really well. It surfs well, and one of the nicest things that I like about that board is when you're on a wave, uh, it's just super easy to maneuver. Uh, if you want to cut across and, and you're trying to link waves, it's it's really easy to get the board to go where you want it to without having to jump around too much or, or do a lot of steering with your paddle. So that's that's what I like the most about that board. And uh, what about width uh, and length? Uh, any Anything, the rocker, nose, anything in particular that you've noticed? Well, this has made a drastic difference. Mm -hmm. Well, the rocker, the kind of side-to-side -side rocker does seem to... Uh, make the board less sticky, as they say. Uh, I think that narrower is definitely an advantage without going so narrow that you can't have your proper paddling technique. So at the end of the day, um, I think actually Danny Ching said this, that you know being on the board and paddling is always going to be faster than swimming. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you have to be still a confident paddler on the width of board that you choose. Um, I've been pretty happy with uh, with with my board. It's about a 28. Um, I think I could probably toy around with going a little bit narrower going going forward in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, and uh, just to kind of go back to the design of the board, one of the biggest challenges being on the Great Lakes is that we have very wind driven w waves as opposed to oh. the the you know the tides and the currents that, that drive your waves. So um, for ours, ours tend to be wind driven. So generally, when we have wavy conditions, it's a windy day. So um, they're short, steep, and very close together. So one of the challenges of that is that when you're on a wave, your nose is typically digging into the next right. one. Uh, so that makes the I have never had I've never taken the M and M out in the ocean. So that's one of the reasons why I'm excited to put it at battle. But in the on the Great Lakes, it's I've found it to be particularly effective in wa in wavy conditions because it's got that nose that pops right oh back out of the waves. God. So it really um, it really pops back out nice without spinning you out or anything like that. So yeah. That is, I mean, because I remember being on a board one time and my nose got caught mm -hmm. and he just like spun me out oh, of yeah, the course. Spin right out and, flip you right and I was about to pass someone. Next thing I know, I'm like almost <laughs> five minutes behind the person. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things I didn't realize, and that's that's why I asked these questions as to gain insights, is what you pointed out to the fact that if you have like short period, basically chop, wind chop, 
that that particular nose, a very low profile nose that basically knifes right, just cuts it right does. through yeah. it, yeah. Uh, doesn't slow you down. If you have a higher profile nose, you have more resistance and it will slow you down. Had mm -hmm. never thought of that. Yeah, it, 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 the, the, the M&M in particular, it really, um, it really slices right back and out just the way cuts through, through it. Yeah, absolutely. And it keeps that water surface rather mm -hmm. being... That's so wow. it's interesting because you're starting to see a couple of board companies come out with that design where they have... It almost looks like the nose is upside down. So instead of having the V-Hall at the bottom, they have it at the it top. It does look upside down. Uh, so it's yeah. almost like the, no, the nose goes like that. They've got a, the V-Hall at the top. So it's, it pops back out of the, out of the water, um, you know, if you're happy to be digging into a wave. So, uh, and you're seeing a couple companies take that on. So, yeah. Wow, see, that's great. I had never thought of that. Uh, one day I will visit and I will see that in person. <laughs> Experience yes, it for yourself. So, yeah. yeah. No, great insight. All right, uh, we're going to uh, move right into uh, the technique uh, mm -hmm. talk right here. And uh, what do you bring as far as, you know, C1 into stand-up that you, you found like, oh, this is helpful? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, certainly all the kilometers has, uh, has largely helped uh, my, my stand-up paddling. Uh, but in terms of technique, I've had to make a couple modifications. So in the sprint canoe, in sprint canoe, there's you a You had lot to develop the other side. Yeah. <laughs> in addition to developing the other side of my body, um, the, the focus on, on in sprint canoe is definitely on a really, really big setup, a nice big, a positive blade angle, which is putting the paddle in the water, um, you know, on a, on a forward angle as opposed to neutral or negative. Um, and, uh, and definitely on having a nice, long, uh, dynamic, powerful stroke right to the hip. Uh, hips have a lot to, uh, to do with the C1 stroke. So all of those have transferred over into stand-up. So um, what I have found that I've had to change is that I've shortened my stroke a little bit in stand-up. So um, it, or at least it feels a little bit shorter because your paddle is so much longer that if you try to pull that same, you know, over, overreach the front and pull your hand all the way back to your hip, your paddle will end up way behind you and you'll just be shoveling water up. So I've, I've, had to, if, I've had to shorten up my strokes just a little bit to help get the cadence up and work within kind of an, an effective, effective paddle angle, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so that's one of, the, one of the changes I've had to make, uh, but on the flip side of things, um, a lot of great things come from uh, being in the C1, being, coming from a C1 background, and that is that the stroke is entirely driven by your hips. So all of the twist and, and the power really comes from your, from your hips. Are you taking the blade in front of your toes and your heels? Uh, what are you? Uh, blade out, blade out at my at my feet, basically. Okay. Yeah, don't don't really go much past my feet. Okay, yeah. all right. So the hand will be in front of my, in front of in front of me. That's good. And the hip release, mm -hmm. engage everything. Yeah. So diet, are you any? Uh, you guys, uh, any you know, take your diet seriously, nutrition. How does that look like? Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, so yeah we uh, we try to be very cautious about what we eat and, and try to eat well. Uh, as much as we'd like to eat five times a day, I think Jess is better than uh, at doing that than I am. I typically have three meals a day and you know, I try to make them uh, very well balanced meals: uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I try to eat as much as I can at lunch try to make that a very substantial meal and then at dinner because uh, we typically a little bit later maybe seven eight o'clock at night and we try to make our dinners a little lighter um, and, and smaller in portion as well so that being you know trying to stay as hydrated as possible eating well and smart but I don't do a lot of supplements um, so keep it natural keep no I supplements and natural. what does it look like what is your diet what is your lunch uh, what does it look like? My lunch will be uh, anything from a sandwich with some carbs, maybe rice, uh, potatoes, a salad on the side, and some fruit, um, you know, or even a pasta meal, with, uh, which is obviously a lot more carbs, with, uh, with something on the side as well, maybe a salad. Uh, dinners, we try to keep really small. We'll do uh, something with protein, maybe a, a large salad with some chopped up chicken on top, um, tuna, or, or something else on top that will give us that a little bit of protein uh, for dinner. But and what uh, about breakfast? Yeah, breakfast is a... Uh, <laughs> He's a bagel guy. I, I'm a bagel guy, so <laughs> I, I typically... That's the weak spot. That's my breakfast weak spot. Breakfast is my favorite meal, and I yeah. think it's the most important. Yeah. So and you two have the same type of diet. It's, it's Similar, uh, yeah. She's better. Yeah, I <laughs> definitely try to eat whole foods, yeah. natural foods, go organic on all the foods where it's important to go organic. 
Um, my problem is hydration. I don't hydrate enough because I don't get thirsty. Um, so that's something that I do need to work on. I am a coffee drinker, but I try to limit the coffee. Um, but basically staying away from anything deep fried and, you know, carbonated beverages right. and stuff like that. So. And you said fi eating five times a day to keep your metabolism. I'm a snacker. Running. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So definitely have breakfast is my favorite meal. I'll do eggs or, you know, yogurt, granola or, um, or an oatmeal in the winter. I t tend to drift towards hot foods. Uh, snacks, you know, fruits and maybe, or maybe a bar or something like that. Lunch will be a sandwich, something easy because it's usually on the fly. Uh, and then dinner we usually put together a nice big, nice big organic spinach salad with vegetables and cheeses and stuff like that. Oh, so. you got me hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> and cold because you said you, you drift towards hot food because it's so cold out there. Oh man, I'm cold to the bone now. So, um, okay, BOP wrapping up here, looking forward to it. Uh, how is mm -hmm. it? Well, uh, when when you say you know waves are head high and Talia is going yeah, I'm going oh no. <laughs> uh, definitely, uh, again we um, it's it's very much a learning experience for us because we don't have access to those conditions back at home. The waves are different even if they are big. So um, I'm excited about it. Um, I'm excited to see the number of people that are going to be on the water and to see the number of women in particular because right. uh, women are getting very strong. Well, you know. Yeah, I know. I, know. I wear a wig sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I, see, them, I yeah. see them passing. Yeah. Yes. I try to draft them. I'm not even fast <laughs> enough to draft them. That's how scary it's getting. You know, I used to, like, I used to be faster than I think most, almost all women in the beginning. Maybe not, maybe two were faster than me. Now you, you gals, obviously I didn't keep up with the race scene, but you gals and everybody has gotten just so much faster. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So thanks a lot for coming to the Thank show. Thank you very much uh, for having me. Jessica us. Rando and uh, Del Da Silva. <laughs> so I got there all the way from Canada. Any the shout Canadian outs? Twin. That's, uh, that's right. Yeah, I'd like to. That's right. Look at that. Yeah. Send a if shout out to like a, um, a company back at home, Kayak Sport <laughs> Canada. They are um, great friends of mine, uh, my sub family, and they've been amazing at supporting me in my racing endeavors. Um, definitely Boardworks, and Boardworks Surf and Boardworks Surf Canada, who have uh, shout out to John, so John, yeah, John, John Piper, John. who uh, I know wants to be here uh, terribly bad, um, and also to my Canadian friends, dollar Canadian friends, that I know yeah. couldn't make it for one one reason or another, but I know they really want to be here. So, all righty, yeah. thanks. Though. That's it. Yeah, That's it. Got you covered, covered it. Got it. Covered. Covered it. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot for uh, coming to the show. This is the SubConnect Live show. We're wrapping up yet another episode. You can follow previous episodes on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash SubConnect. And for all the other news, stay tuned for SubConnect.com. Coming up next, we have Talia Gangini coming up on the set here, one of the hottest, fastest uh, young talents out there today. So uh, you want to stay tuned. We'll be right back.